Oh, in the days uh, Tom Jones was flying around in space, he was up a little higher, so above some of these incidents you see happening on planes. But scary stuff, nevertheless. The former NASA astronaut Tom Jones with us right now. Tom, good to have you because uh, now we're looking at expanding um, space missions, this time to Venus. On man, of course, uh, just like some of our more spectacular adventures to Mars have been, been unmanned. Uh, we're, we're told that in the case of Venus, for example, that India, Japan could follow us, China down the road. What do you make of all of these unmanned missions? I think we're going back to territory, Neil, that we haven't touched in over 30 years. The last U.S. Uh, probe to go into Venus's atmosphere was in 1978. And the last lander from the Russians was in 1985. So there are a lot of unanswered questions about Venus. We've sort of ignored our twin planet uh, sunward to us because it's such a harsh environment to operate in. If you put a spacecraft on the surface, it's gonna get cooked in about an hour or crushed by the immense pressure of the atmosphere, 92 times that of uh, Earth's surface pressure here. So it's a tough place to go visit, but there are still a lot of questions unanswered. Why did this planet go off the rails and become a, a, a hell house, a runaway greenhouse, if you will? And why is it different or like Earth in terms of its composition? Why did we have such divergent paths for Earth and its nearest neighbor? So part of the curiosity with Venus is that it might provide key lessons for us with the greenhouse effect and all this other that turned oceans, we're told, into, into boiling ones if, if they exist at all anymore. What do you think? This is a, one of the biggest questions. You know, Earth got a lot of water when it was uh, uh, formed out of the solar nebula. Venus should have gotten a similar complement, maybe a little bit less because it's a little bit closer to the sun. But if it did have oceans in the past and they boiled away, can we prove that? And one of these probes, um, da Vinci, is going to parachute down through the atmosphere and look for the leftover gases in the atmosphere that might be the clues, the fingerprint of an ancient ocean. And then the other probe, Veritas, will take radar images of the planet, make a very detailed map. You might be able to see shorelines or ocean beach terraces from millions or billions of years ago if they still remain on that planet's surface. So we got get some good clues about the early Divergence of paths for Earth and Venus this way. You know, we always talk back and forth about life at other worlds and that all these so called UFO incidents, uh, the military's releasing videos of the rest. Uh, I I'm just wondering your thoughts on that uh, and, and, and whether you believe they're out there, whether you believe they're, they're out and now visiting um, Earth. So big picture, I think that our Milky Way galaxy probably has about 40 billion Earth-like planets in it. So the odds of us being the only inhabited planet are pretty small. So I think there are intelligent civilizations are likely to be out there. I just don't think that we're very important enough to, to warrant a visit by any civilization that's out there. So uh, I'd like to see more evidence of um, these um, sightings of UFOs. I've, I've not seen one in space or on the ground. And so until I get some concrete pieces of these craft or machines or phenomenon, you know, I really can't say that they're, they're anything to worry about. What does worry me, though, is that they might be uh, terrestrial adversaries, machines, drones or other, other military equipment that's being tested and that we just don't uh, have a handle on. Uh, I like to think that we have something in our back pocket here and that that's a, it's a U.S machine that's being tested and just most people aren't read in on it, just like we had secret aircraft programs over the last few decades, like the SR-71. So you think whatever the these fighter. images, I'm sorry, Tom, but whatever these images are, or look like, you know, uh, unidentified flying objects might in fact be Earth-made objects, but maybe not from us, but from other uh, other countries. That that could be scary, too, if, if some of them have a technology that we do not and, and all the implications of that. Does it concern you? Well, we should be properly concerned and make sure that we can eliminate that there are an adversary's craft or machine as part of the, the answer to this question. You know, there's a, a set of sightings that we can't explain. These are real things that people are seeing. But some set of the, those are going to be explainable as natural phenomenon that we maybe just don't understand on our own planet. Um, some of them are just mistake cases of mistaken identity, you know, an airliner or a planet uh, shimmering in the atmosphere. But we should make certain that we can rule out the fact that they're flown by Chinese or, or Russian controllers somewhere. And I'd like to think that, um, you know, when I was in the Air Force flying B-52s, I didn't know about all the classified programs that the Air Force was operating. And if I'd spotted something mm -hmm. of those, I wouldn't have known how to explain it other than to say it's a UFO. Do you think, Tom, everyone is coming in peace when it comes to space, though? Much has been made of China and its efforts not only on the moon, but Mars. They've got 
some landers there. In fact, I, I was reading somewhere, I, I don't remember the exact number, but that what China is spending on its space efforts, it's all the other nations, our own included, combined. Does that concern you on any level? No, I, I, I am concerned that China is making rapid advances in space. Uh, to show its technological prowess and to convince other countries around the world that it's the leader in technology. And I think that the way we um, compete is to actually accomplish things in space. I think the Chinese are still well behind us. They just launched the first module of their space station. We've had one operating for 20 years. Um, we've landed rovers on Venus since 19, well, uh, spacecraft on Venus since starting in 1976, rovers in the late 1990s, and they're just getting their first one down. So they have a lot of ground to make up. And I think we should keep our technological lead by taking on challenging tasks like visiting the surface of Venus or putting a search for life on the Jupiter moon Europa and putting people back hmm. on the moon so that we're, we're well ahead of our, um, our friendly adversaries in human space exploration. All right. As long as I stay friendly adversaries, to your point, Tom Jones, great seeing you again, my friend. Um, Thank you.